what are you doing, Dion? Putting some sashimi tuna. What sort of caught uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday? Uh, <laughs> just saw some, are you lying? Just saw some tuna. <laughs> and uh, we've eaten some. This is our third day we're eating tuna. We've got enough for tomorrow as well. And we are going to have it with soy sauce and wasabi, uh, as well as some ginger. We having uh, we having tuna sashimi. Uh -huh. uh, fresh tuna we got in uh, in, in, in Santa Lina because our fishing skills have left much to be desired. Um, if it wasn't too small, it was lost. Do you want to tell us about that fish yesterday? Oh man, we had yeah, the most beautiful Dorado, and as we got her aboard, it shook itself loose off the hook because unfortunately we never had a gap to gap the fish but uh, bless its soul because they made for life and I'm sure its partner was close by Then it goes What? Then it goes when you got fish <laughs> Sometimes you just have to ask yourself what does this fish mean to me? And well that fish means to us dinner for two nights which is real nice <laughs> Let me tell you, it is better eating than catfish any day. So anyway, our luck seems to have changed out here, at least as far as fishing and wind are concerned. But we can't say for sure it's changed because I've become a little superstitious. To be honest, I'm not sure if we should say anything because it might all end in tears and storms and no fish. But uh, as it is, we're coming up on the equator. We're five and a half or so degrees off. Uh, we've been going pretty well with, you know, six, seven, eight knot winds, pretty steady since we left Santa Lina. And we've caught two fish. So life is going pretty damn well out here in the Atlantic. I think I'll enjoy the sunset now. Uh, we're eating fresh tuna. Caught just the other day. Dion organized it. He's been cutting it up and filleting it. And it is good, good, good. It's like having a fresh sushi party right here on the boat. Who said adventure was all privation and starvation? Not true. And you're gonna lower me down the front of the boat. So in effect, you're asking to be keel hauled. Yes, underneath the boat. Uh, now, why would you do something like this? Because I'd like you just to have it. We had a little bit of a bang under the boat. Um, uh, Jeff said it was a wave. He was outside. We were inside the boat had a momentary jolt, almost like a momentary stopping motion. Um, it's a very calm sea, very flat sea. So I'm gonna have a look and then also play a little bit, you know. It's all part of the part of the fun. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, no, it'll be fine. It's a bit of water pressure. I think it'll be okay. Oh. But this was just very, it was all like a soggy thud, you know? And, uh, shame, poor turtle or whatever it was, but there's no major damage. I mean, the keel, it's right there at its strongest point, right where the, base, the keel foil is attached to the base plate, and it's incredibly strong. There's no leverage on it there, so, no, we're in good shape, no problem. This is Jeffrey Childs in the kitchen of the Scram. I just wanted to share with you all a little recipe that I knocked up from Alaska. It's just, it's really just a fricassee into tuna here. Uh, it's more of a dorado, actually. But, uh, in fact, what we want to do is wrap it all up, put it in the oven, and it will cook itself over the course of a few hours, filling the boat with wonderful smells. It will be very lovely.